Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I'm Pastor Sam and I'm so glad you joined me on the program today. I believe the message that I'm about to share with you may be the most important message that I have ever preached in 44 years. As you know, recently the Supreme Court of the land decided that sodomy would become the law of the land here in America. I believe that God has something to say about it, and I believe this simply moves us one step closer to the coming of Jesus Christ. That's why the message that I preach today is so important, and I call it Countdown to Rapture. The next great event on God's calendar, without a doubt, is the literal, visible, bodily appearing of Jesus Christ in the clouds of glory. I want everybody to be ready, and you can be. Here's what I want to do. If you'll call me now, I want to send to you this message, Countdown to Rapture. The number to call is 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. I'm going to send it to you absolutely free, and I'll rush it, but you must call me now. Again, the number to call is 804-744-8881. Let's go together now into that service where the power of God is moving, and that service is already in progress. Luke chapter 17, beginning verse 24, reads like this, For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part of heaven shineth unto the other part of heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. What generation? The generation that will witness his return. You cannot talk about Jesus in school. How many of you students know that? Say amen. You cannot read your Bible in school, they say. You cannot pray in school. I wish I were 16. I'd test that. But now they're saying, don't talk about Jesus. You can talk about Ramadan. You can talk about Muhammad. You can talk about Allah. But don't talk about Jesus. He's not welcome here. Jesus is not welcome in the courthouse. Jesus is not welcome in this generation in America. And it's a shame that we're being lectured by Vladimir, Vladimir Putin about morality. It's a shame that even some of the communist countries have chided us because we've restricted what fundamentalist Christians can say and evangelical Christians can say. Not left-wing radicals, but those of us who believe that the Bible is the Word of God and that Jesus is Lord, our freedoms have been restricted. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. And he goes on to say that it eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. So he's saying is that they life was just routine. Verse 28, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. You see, today, after the big celebration when we painted the White House the colors of the rainbow, and isn't it interesting that the gays have chosen as a symbol the rainbow? That was the sign God gave to Noah. But people today are doing what they did yesterday and last week and what they plan to be doing in the weeks and months to come because they're not alarmed about what's happening on the world scene. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone 
from heaven and destroyed them all. Our meeting together is set against the backdrop of mounting world tension. Civilization is flirting with disaster and destruction. And it seems that our world, especially here in America, is in a suicidal race for ruin. But in the midst of all this, ringing in our ears should be the words of Jesus. When you see these things coming to pass, look up, lift up your heads. Why? Redemption draweth nigh. There are 2.2 billion Christians in the world today. 32% of the world's population is Christian. But what you're not hearing about over the media is the fact that the church is being persecuted in an unprecedented fashion with millions being persecuted and thousands being martyred for the cause of Christ. I believe the next great event on God's calendar is the literal, visible, bodily appearing of Jesus Christ in the clouds of glory. I believe Jesus is coming back. If you believe that, tell your neighbor. Jesus is coming. Jesus led his disciples as far as Bethany. He lifted his hands and blessed them. And he said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high and being assembled together with them. He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And as he lifted his hands and blessed them, he ascended to the Father, and he went back to heaven where he was worshipped and adored by angels. And as he ascended to heaven, the Bible says that angels stood by and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So angels said that Jesus would come back. In fact, if that's not enough for you, in the second chapter of the book of Hebrews, it declares that the word spoken by the angels was steadfast. If that's not enough, the apostle Paul said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Paul said Christ will return. And if that's not enough for you, the apostle Peter said that in the last days, scoffers would come asking the question, where is the promise of his coming? But he said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And if that's not enough for you, John said, Beloved, now we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. The incentive for godly living and personal wholeness is the coming of Jesus Christ. And if that's not enough for you, the Lord himself says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, for in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Jesus is coming back. If you believe that, give God your best praise this morning. Because we are a going church for a coming Christ. But I want you to notice what I read in your hearing Jesus said as it was in the days of Noah and Lot. The generation in which Christ returns will be very similar spiritually to the day of Noah and to the days of Lot. Genesis 6 and 5 says, God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it grieved God that he had made man. This is the generation of Noah. God saw their wickedness and his heart was grieved. Today when God looks at America, what does he see? He sees that America has indulged in every kind of sin. That our homes 
and marriages are no longer considered sacred. That children along with adults are being exploited in pornography. That movies are filled with sex and violence and profanity. Even using God's name as a vile expletive. While we sit idly by saying, what is the big deal about it all? Why are you so uptight? Why don't you take a chill pill faster? Why don't you relax? It's just the way things are. You live in the 21st century. Styles, customs, and conditions may be constantly changing, but God is the same from everlasting to everlasting. And God's word does not change. When you and I heard about the Supreme Court's decision on Friday, we were shocked. We were dismayed. I had so many different emotions. I was angry. I was frustrated. I was disappointed. I was disheartened. I couldn't believe that in America we could drift so far away from the righteous principles that are set forth in God's Word as to celebrate, to celebrate in this country a law that made marriage between two men and two women legal and hell was holding high jubilee on Cary Street. The party started and lasted all night long. People came in and talked about Marriage equality. Isn't it amazing how we've come up with new names for old sins so that we can feel good without being good? Abortion isn't an abortion anymore. It's women's health. And same-sex marriage, sodomy, if you please, is now marriage equality. And everybody's trying to be real positive about something that is an abomination in the sight of God. We have embraced something God has condemned. And when we condone what God has condemned, we are begging for judgment. Are y'all listening to me this morning? This is a sad day in America. This is not a happy day. This is not a day of celebration. This is not a day to paint the White House in rainbow colors. This is a day for America to grieve. We need to cry out to God and ask God to spare us because judgment is on the way. as it was in the days of Noah. When God enclosed Noah and his family in the ark of safety, he broke up the fountains of the great deep and caused it to rain for 40 days and 40 nights and drowned a wicked world as it was in the days of Noah. He said as it was in the days of Lot. Can I give you just a little bit of a, of a historical background of what happened in Sodom? There were two men whom God had blessed. One was named Abraham and the other was Lot. Lot was Abraham's nephew. In fact, the Lord blessed them so much that their herds got so big and their servants were so many that finally Abraham said, Now Lot, we have got to separate. We've got to part ways because the Lord has blessed us so much and your family has grown, my family has grown, and, and what's yours is yours, and, 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 and we, we're going to get, we're, we're going we, we're gonna to have problems. So the best thing for us to do is just, you go one way, I'll go the other. Now this is unprecedented because here's a senior partner saying to the junior partner as they look down over a panoramic view of the horizon, you choose where you want to go with your flocks and your cattle, you choose, and I'll go someplace else. And Lot's carnal mind said, I'll go right down there. He chose the well-watered plains of Sodom. He said, that's where I'll raise my family. You need to be careful where you choose to raise your family. Somebody said, oh, bastard, you're just an alarmist. I'm so sick and tired of you just harping on that, talking about that. Don't you know my kids love the Lord? If the school system 
which has been hijacked by left-wing liberals, has your children for eight hours, and you don't spend three minutes a day in meaningful conversation with them, guess who's going to have the greater influence? And some of you have gotten where you don't even come on Wednesday night. You just, now that the kids can drive you, I'm just going over there to battle cry. And, you know, we're so tired, we're going to stay at home and watch television. We're going to put our feet up. We just worked hard so you can have all the things that every young person needs, like an Xbox and computers and iPhones and this thing and that thing, because I never had that, and I want you to have it. So you're working two jobs to give them things they really don't need when they need you, and they need to hear you talking about Jesus, and they need to see you worshiping God, and they need to see you leading the way in spiritual matters. But you want to just give them stuff, and you think if you just throw money at them, somehow they're going to turn out to be great kids. The devil wants to steal everything that's precious to you. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he'd love to steal your family. And so Lot, of, Lot went down to Sodom and Gomorrah, and guess what happened? Sodom and Gomorrah got in his family. The reason God destroyed Sodom is because they really had a bad economy. The reason God destroyed Sodom is they had a lot of political upheaval with people. You, the reason God destroyed Lot of, uh, Lot, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is because uh, they had a really poor educational system. What? Why did God destroy Sodom, the twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? Because of one thing. The Bible is clear. The sin of homosexuality. And God said, enough is enough. God even sent an angel, sent angels into the place, and the men tried to molest the angels. And let me tell you how sick and sorry Lot had become. He said, I know who you, you guys are angels, and I know God sent you here to check this place out, and these guys are trying to, to rape you. Hey, men, listen, don't take these guys. I got some daughters you can have. My God, what kind of a father is willing to sacrifice his daughters to be gang raped and say, oh, it's okay, we're living in Sodom. This is how we roll here. And they were so perverted, they said, no, we want these men. And about that time, the angel said, this is enough. This is enough. You better get out of here and get your family out now because God is about to rain fire and brimstone, brimstone down and bring judgment. And let me tell you what happened. Lot got his wife and he got his daughters, and he went out, and his wife loved Sodom so much. God warned, don't look back, don't look back. She turned and looked back and says that she turned to a pillar of salt. Who knows, maybe she had a stroke. Maybe she stroked out. She loved Sodom so much, and they just kept moving. Now, he had his daughters, but he never could get Sodom out of his daughters because he committed incest with his daughters and became the father of his own grandchildren. That's what happens when you stay in Sodom. Are y'all listening to me? And Jesus said, I didn't say this, not even Paul, not Peter, not one of the apostles. Jesus himself said, you want to know what it's going to be like on the earth when I come back? You need to study what it was like in Sodom and Gomorrah in Lot's day. Now, folks, you can question everything we say. You can question what we say about Iran and Iraq. You can question what we say about Russia. We, you can question what we say about the economy. You can say, I've heard all that stuff before, but you cannot challenge what has happened here in America since Friday. And if that is not Sodom and Gomorrah, I don't know what you call it. And now we've got all these folks so thrilled about making history. You know, I have been very careful in this church for five years to never divide us over politics because I feel like we're above all that. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm a Christian. And the truth is, it seems like it doesn't matter who gets in control. There's, it's all the same thing. It's greed. It's graft. It's, it, it's, it, it's just wicked. And I'm not here to promote one party over another. But I think it's time for every Christian to say, wait a minute. I cannot endorse abortion. I cannot endorse gay marriage. 
I cannot be a party to this. And if this is your platform and this is what you're going to do, I will never vote for you. I will never vote for you when you tell me you're in favor of gay marriage. And I want to say something else. And every time I do this, I, draw, I feel you drawing up because, oh, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But now I, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather offend you than I had God. You need to know this. And you need to hear me and get, keep on loving me because I am not against President Obama because he's black. And another thing you need to remember, he's not just black, he's white too. So if it offends you, me talking about the black part of him, I'm going to talk about the white part. And then that way you won't be offended. He would never have been elected if he had told America, I'm in favor of gay marriage. He would never have been elected if he told us the things that he was going to do. But the problem was he did tell us and he said we'd be fundamentally changed when he got through with it and all of us were so stupid we thought he was talking about something else. There is an agenda on the left and what they want to do is level the playing field because people like our president believe that America got where it got illegally that we are not a legal nation that we stole the land from the Indians and we had slaves and we did this and we did that and all of our founding fathers were self-serving opportunists and the historical revisionists have tried to tell us that we don't have a spiritual legacy I want to tell you the only reason that God Almighty raised up America is because he knew we would be a gospel lighthouse to the world and if you go any nation in the world you'll find food that has been sent there by the by America you'll find help in the time of trouble, whether it's an earthquake or a natural disaster or a war, you'll find Bibles that were printed and dip distributed free of charge. You'll find missionaries from America and you'll find people that have been trained in America or trained in, on their, na in their native soil or, or to be a missionary. Why? Because God raised us up as a lighthouse. And you can make, you can let people uh, say to you that you're off on some side tributary and you're not in the mainstream if you want to but I like to tell them the reason America is here is because of people just like us that God would raise up to be a light in a dark world I, I don't know whether I ought to keep preaching or, or run for office when God judged Sodom and Gomorrah, and he judged the antediluvians. He had to wait until he got Noah and his family in the ark, until he got Lot and his bunch out. And then the Bible said the same day, the same day, he rained judgment down. I want you to know the only thing that's keeping the judgment of God from being poured out on us is a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, spirit-filled church. When we're out of here, it's Katie bar the gate. When we're out of here, watch out, because judgment is coming. You say, it's, it's already starting, Pastor. I already sense it. It's starting. It is, but God has promised to protect us. God has promised to keep us. And God is not going to allow the body of Christ to suffer the wrath of God a second time. Jesus died on the cross for us so that we could have eternal life and the wrath of God was poured out on Jesus Christ. We are the body of Christ in the 21st century and God is not about to pour his wrath out on the body a second time because Christ suffered once for us, not the second time in the tribulation. If you want to stay here during the tribulation, it's easy enough. Just backslide and you'll stay here. But as for me, I plan to go in the first airlift and I plan to stay ready. Hallelujah. I want you to pray with me right now and I'm going to lead you in a prayer God will hear and answer. Are you ready to pray? Pray like this. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Please forgive me for all of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness through the precious blood of Jesus. Make me rapture ready 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Let me know that I'm ready to meet you when you come in the clouds. Because of the grace of God and the shed blood 
of Jesus Christ. For it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. I believe God gave you a confirmation right then in your heart. If Jesus were to come right now, you are ready. There are so many others who are not ready. Your loved ones, your family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, let's do everything we can in the short op time uh, that's available to us and the opportunity that we have uh, to tell people about the coming of the Lord. And one of the ways you can do that is I want to send to you now, I'm not selling this, I'm sending it to you absolutely free. There's no gimmick here. All you have to do is call me, 804-744-8881, and you'll hear the message that you heard on radio or television, and, and it's called Countdown to Rapture. I want you to have it. I only ask you to do one thing. After you've listened to it, share it with somebody else. After you've watched it and you see uh, what it is that, that God wanted you to know about the rapture, please pass this on to somebody. Get it into somebody's hands who needs to hear this message. We're living in the last days. And because we're living in the last days, we've got to do everything we can to extend and expand the kingdom of God. You need to find a good church. You need to find a church that preaches the truth. Some of the things I say are controversial. Some of the things I say are intended to push your hot button. You need to make up your mind if you're a Christian or not. And if you're a Christian, then you believe the Word of God. You believe what God says, and you're trying to do what's right in the sight of the Lord and not in the sight of man. And you're more concerned about offending God than you are offending man. So you need to find a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled church. Victory Tabernacle is one of those churches. You can join us every Sunday morning here at 10 o'clock for two full hours of praise and worship and ministry from the Word of God and always a time together in His presence around the altar. Don't forget that the last Sunday in every month is our Miracle Sunday, which means we have an additional service at 6 o'clock in our chapel. And i got to tell you, I've seen God perform miracles. I mean, these last day miracles and signs were, were predicted and prophesied. God promised to pour His Spirit out in the last days, and we're seeing people healed and delivered, and I want you to be a part of it. So put that on your calendar. Also remember that during the middle of the week, you can find us here in our Family Enrichment Night Service on Wednesday at 7 p.m. We have something special for every age group and every member of the family. Royal Rangers for the boys, Missionettes for the girls, a dynamic youth program called Battle Cry, a ministry to college and career age young people called The Vine. I'm teaching in the main sanctuary. Don't forget, we have our Hispanic ministry that meets in the chapel as well. It all starts at 7, but at 8.30, we're walking out the door. Also, I want you to go to our website today. That's victorytab.org, victorytab.org, and check out two things. First of all, check out the Battle Cry Radio Network, which is our 24-hour internet radio network. You can get it anywhere in the world. The second thing I want you to do is check out Ustream, because every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, we are sending out our program live over the air, and you can be a part of it. We want you to be with us in person, but if you can't be, then please go to Ustream, victorytab.org, and click on Ustream. Thank you for being a part of the program today. May the Lord bless you, and until we're together again like this around the Word of God, this is Pastor Sam reminding you that here at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings a victory, and miracles still happen.